Well, hello everyone, and welcome to Zen and the Art of SolidWorks Surfacing, presented by the Demani Group. My name is Andrew Lowe. I'm a senior industrial designer. I've been using SolidWorks for almost 15 years now. Do rough surfaces have you on edge? Got a kink in your spline? Zen out and come to really understand how SolidWorks surfacing works. Using advanced techniques, I'll demonstrate surface modeling workflows that allow you to quickly and easily create the most challenging of shapes. Located just outside Chicago, Illinois, the Demonic Group is a full-service product development consultancy offering industrial design, design engineering, electrical engineering, and software development services. Welcome to another installment of Zen and the Art of SolidWorks Surfacing. In this installment, we'll be taking a look at creating offsets of splines. Now, you think this might actually be pretty straightforward. You're in the 2D sketch environment. You simply pick the offset sketch entity button, select the dimension you want, and you're done. But when it comes to splines, it's not so simple. Lines and arcs, no problem, but let's jump into SOLIDWORKS and take a look. So here we have some kind of plastic enclosure for some kind of electronics device. Ultimately, it doesn't matter what it is. What does matter is noting the shape of this object. And it's primarily composed of these outer sidewalls, this flat face here, and then this scalloped inside. And if we take a look, the this edge here, or this kind of perimeter, appears to be an offset of this outer profile, and then the scalp edge kind of ends here, which also appears to be an offset of this edge. So if we were to start a sketch on this plane, let's just see what happens when we go to offset this geometry. So I'm just picking this edge, I'll convert it into the sketch, pick the sketch segment, sketch entity, and we're just going to offset it a half inch. I like toggling the reverse button a couple times just to make sure it's going in the correct direction, and click OK. So unfortunately SolidWorks does not do the greatest job of offsetting splines. The smaller they get, the tighter they, they appear to get. If we were to offset this one again, let's say another half inch, probably would, I don't even think it's going to like it. So I would need to actually exit this sketch, because it's not going to let me offset an offset, and start another sketch, convert this in, hide the original sketch, and let's offset it another half inch and then see how much it aligns with this one. So we'll pick our offset, toggle the reverse a couple times, there we go, and it kind of gave up, it really didn't like offsetting that. Let's try a smaller distance just so that way we can see the, the visual amount. So let's just try a quarter of an inch here. Offset no problem, but it's actually getting tighter and tighter. If we return on the curvature combs, we can see that it's a very, very tight as, as accelerated here. It's also it's very not a very nice spline. It's got this weird kind of divot thing in here. Turning on the curvature combs for this one, this one looks a little bit better. And then converting this edge in just so we can analyze it. Look at our curvature combs. This one's really nice. So here, the tight, the more we offset it, the tighter and tighter uh, this sketch offset gets. And it's, it's not the nicest offset. So one way we can do this is leveraging the same trick we're using for creating parametric uh, G3 style splines we can use to manually create offsets. So let's investigate. So the top of this shape was ultimately created with a cut and then some additional surfacing went in here, which will be explored in a later video. So if we take a look at this sketch here, it's not actually an offset. Here is our style spline, but our offset is created in an additional sketch. So this is the offset of the, the style spline, but you can see curvature is not great. We get that divot there. It's not nearly as nice as the original edge. So we're going to not use this profile here, but we will use these two arcs because you know arcs have no problem being offset. So jumping back into our other sketch, what we're doing here is showing the original G3 style spline that we're trying to offset here. And it's simply a matter of creating a style spline six degrees. So we'll sketch a rough one up the degrees to six. And we don't even need to add equal curvature or anything here. All we need to do is just pick the corresponding line segments and make them all parallel to each other. Here we go. We're going to pick this one and we'll just keep going through the process, making everything parallel to its mate or corresponding entity in the original sketch. Make parallel. It looks like our points kind of went a little bit over the place. So we need to adjust the length of the points and then we're going to make 
each of the segments equal to each other. This one kind of flipped and we're gonna do the same thing here. We'll make them equal to each other. Now our spline is fully defined and let's take a look at the curvature. Really nice clean curvature here, no issues there. And so this is a great way of creating offsets and not relying on the, the offset entities tool in the sketcher, but just setting up relations between the original sketch you're trying to offset. And we have a much nicer looking profile. Likewise, when we go to create the scalped area here, here's the original menu offset. You can see how much larger it is. And we're just using another style spline and making the entities parallel to each other. And now we have something we can use for our trim. So something to be aware of when you are creating offsets of splines in the 2D Sketcher and SolidWorks, the offset entities tool doesn't work so well. The splines get tighter and tighter and tighter the more you offset them. The curvature gets worse and worse and worse the more you offset them. But you can work around that by leveraging the workaround to create parametric G3 style splines. Simply create a new style spline and make the control segments parallel to the corresponding control segments in the spline that you're trying to offset. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this installment of Zen and the Art of SolidWorks Surfacing. Be sure to check out the example SolidWorks files on the Demonic Group website linked in the description below. And don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Happy SolidWorks Surfacing.